Paul Brand from TinkerTry.com. I'm here with Juan. So Juan Fernandez, can you start with your title at Intel? So I am a storage architect with Intel's non-volatile storage group. Uh, I'm based in Folsom, California, and I work with the, the business unit and the, the firmware developers and QA engineers that test and qualify all of the, the Intel portfolio of, of SSDs. All right, so um, two years ago at VMworld, I actually stopped by a booth and met um, Ken Letourneau. He, we were talking about uh, getting hardware qualified for vSAN. So as you know, I'm a blogger. I do work at Tinkertry. I'm also here doing a booth at VM, VMware's booth in the hyper-converged infrastructure, the HCI booth area, where all the vendors are showing off their wares. And of course, Intel front and center there with the Optane logo and all that. So after this video, we're also going to head over out to the uh, booths and check out all the form factors. But we have two of them right in front of us here. So one, if we could start with, uh, let's do a quick history. NAND, right? So NAND for the last nine years or so has been what's inside our flash drive. So I'm going to hold that one up first. If you could talk to what we're looking at here a little bit. Uh, so this is actually a previous generation add-in card. Uh, this is a, one of our higher endurance P3700 SSDs. Um, one of the, the, the common components uh, of uh, Intel technology is the numbering nomenclature, and that is a 3700. The second number designates the endurance, and so this would be the uh, cache device in a vSAN deployment. Um, we would recommend uh, a P4800X now, which is our Optane technology with 3D Crosspoint Media, but um, currently available and in the vSAN reference design guide would be the 3700, which is why we have that here for demonstration. All right, so we could talk to that topic just a little bit. Uh, endurance is the key word. So if you're talking about vSAN and a caching layer of vSAN, it's getting a lot of write abuse. So we're holding NAND, like we said, the previous generation, or still current, really. Still current, yep, yeah. yep, still current. Uh, we're about to get to some other form factors, but if you could just talk a little bit about NAND versus 3D Crosspoint. So what makes Optane, your branding of 3D Crosspoint special? Uh, it, so Optane, the, the Intel branded technology for, for data center, is uh, fundamentally different media. And the 3D Crosspoint media has much higher endurance and much lower latency, um, commonly referred to as memory class storage. So adding persistence, um, but also lowering the latency of the internal mechanisms to be able to uh, satisfy memory type workloads or high write endurance workloads as in the caching device within a vSAN configuration. Um, those products are currently shipping and we just announced some really interesting results and numbers with vSAN 6.6 and the Optane Drive. And to your point, we have in the, uh, the HCI zone our uh, best foot forward representation of, of Optane Media with our next generation NAND as the capacity tier in a uh, drag racer of a, of a vSAN configuration. All right, so we talk about a little bit of a deeper dive into latency, right? So when I did a live demo of the uh, Intel P4800X, the full name is Intel, oh boy, help me out with the full name. That's Intel, S well, Intel no, P4800X. series. It's actually Intel SSD P4800X series, I don't know, it's a long name. Okay. Anyhow, so for that product, I had it live in a server with the server running ESXi 6.5 update one, right? So the hypervisor was up, I had a little data center and demoing that live with the PCIe card and a lid off so people could see it. It was actually running an instance of Windows Server 2016 as a VM under ESXi 6.5. And the speed is great. Now, like you just said, that's not the whole picture. Speed, meaning like boot speed being six seconds. The CPU settles down to 1% a second after you're seeing the desktop, meaning Windows Server is ready to go and all the services are started, which is inc impressive. It's more about the latency. So when you're talking about vSAN, the real intended use case of something like P4800X, that was supported day zero that you announced the product. VMware was proudly saying yeah. it's right, it's on the vSAN list, thanks to people like you, right, working on that behind the scenes for months in advance. Um, so that latency measurement, right? So for caching layer and for write abuse, it's not just the latency, which is fantastic with Optane. You, can you give us some sense of how much better it is than the previous nine years or so of NAND for latency. We talk about that first. And then finally, how does it do with things like filling to 99%, which NAND didn't do great with, but you did enterprise drives, we had a lot of over provisioning. 3D Crosspoint changes that a bit. So we could just talk, yeah, so we could talk about those two pieces a little bit. Right. 
Yeah, so uh, latency being the internal measurement of the device itself once an I.O. has been issued and off the, the PCI root complex. Um, so once uh, an I.O. hits the, the controller of, of Optane, um, average service time is under 10 microseconds. Uh, enunciating on the, uh, the the microseconds, whereas a traditional NAND device is measured in hundreds of, of microseconds. Um, so what that does is it opens up an entirely different use case for, for Optane uh, in the caching uh, use case, uh, as well as uh, memory and extended memory uh, solutions. So being able to, to access a, a, a large capacity device, 375 gigabytes, 750 gigabytes coming this year in an Optane drive, um, gives you a, a whole nother horizon for, for application uses. Um, and then because each individual memory cell is accessible um, uh, discreetly within the 3D Crosspoint Media, um, you have much higher endurance. You don't have to issue uh, an erase command um, to make new blocks available before issuing a, a write I.O. to the actual device. Um, uh, so write amplification is uh, uh, eliminated from, from the endurance concerns about a traditional SSD. Um, and then also having each individual memory cell uh, accessible uh, gives m much lower latency and that's that's really the the difference is um, each individual memory cell being able to be written to or read from independently with no other association with the the neighboring cells if you will um, that uh, that gives the the Optane drives the the low latency and higher endurance okay so that hint a little bit about some of that housekeeping that went on with NAND and you've right. got background garbage collection consumer SSDs no big deal if it's pretty darn busy for a few milliseconds where it kind of goes into la la land the performance tanks a little bit but on a consumer drive inside a laptop you don't care you're not going to notice this and you care about price more but in an enterprise you want all your io to be fantastic especially for a latency sensitive kind of uh, virtual machine for a intense workload that some customers would want so sounds great for that uh, you talked a little bit about how the technology differs and then i also hinted that you know, I think I asked someone else this question too. Filling it up to 99%, not a big deal. There's plenty of over-provisioning going on still with Optane, or to clarify that there's not, it just, I you know that's a frequent question that comes up. Over-provisioning, that fact that NAND tends to have a lot of chips ready on the standby that aren't used, but it does wear leveling algorithms to move things around. Optane changes all that, if you can speak to that a little bit. Yeah, right. So uh, there are, there are over-provisioning, there's a certain amount of NAND that's over-provisioned in, in an SSD um, for, for two facets. One is the, the endurance that I, I've talked about, um, but uh, also um, for uh, actual you know, uh, hardware failure over time, um, Optane has a small amount of reserve, um, but there's no concept of over-provisioning within an a, a Optane drive. Um, so there is internal XOR uh, function to replace or rebuild data in the event of a, of a package failure. Um, and that happens sometimes within a, an SSD or uh, when a particular package has reached its endurance rate, we will um, proactively move data from that package to a, a reserve space, the over-provisioned space. But Optane, there's minimal overhead. Um, and in fact, there's no benefit to doing over-provisioning or, or trying to, uh, to extend the endurance in, in that uh, traditional way that, that we've, we've reached with, uh, with NAND. Okay, great. And just a quick uh, recap here on the value of um, working with Intel storage or anyone's storage. NVMe in general has been a huge acronym on my many articles for many years, well before I had this role at VMware. So for look, home lab enthusiasts or gamers who always want the quickest load times and all that, also exciting, five or six times faster than SAS or SATA interfaces. Blow that away, get rid of a lot of latency, just move it right to the PCI bus, which is what's here. Um, now, other form factors as we go forward, we've got another one in front of us to show you. Um, and then future directions, it's pretty clear where we're headed on all of that. Um, it's not just a home lab story and enterprise story. There's something in the middle. There's like an enthusiast category. So we can imagine other SKUs coming out with Optane at a more affordable price point where it's not intended to be maybe vSAN workload. It's not with a firmware that's tuned and ready with warranty and, and terabytes written per day, ratings and all that ready for vSAN. Mm -hmm. Something else coming out that you know maybe gamers or home lab enthusiasts might use. It won't be on enterprise support lists from say VMware HCL probably but still someone VMFS formatting and trying it on a home lab. I'm suspecting there might be options. Now we probably don't know timeframes or any of that, but 
there's been a lot of conjecture about that. So I'm just putting that out there that I think it'll be interesting to see what other SKUs you come up with. Now you and I have two more to show uh, uh, today and actually two in the other room we're working out next. We have one more right in front of you that we haven't covered yet and that is this form factor which I tweeted out on day one when I first uh, saw your presentation uh, Sunday back here at VMworld, right? I think, yep. And that got some attention that it was right here at the show because I already had an article about this from I think a couple weeks ago. An extended PDF that kind of gives you kind of a, if you're new to even not even knowing what NVMe is, for, as a starter, there's also form factors of different shapes and sizes of NVMe, which is basically PCIe based uh, storage that may have, may not have hot swap capability. If it's a PCI card, uh, no, you're not generally hot swapping that, right? <laughs> um, so if you could tell us a little bit about this Optane, what capacity, not Optane, excuse me, NAND, yes. yep. So, and clear that up. Intel SSD you're holding called DCP4500 series. Tell us about what you're holding and the capacity. Well, this is, <clears throat> this is the same SSD uh, fundamentally that you would buy in a two and a half inch form factor. Um, when you think about a two and a half inch form factor, it was designed with a rotational platter in mind. And uh, we challenged our engineering team to come up with a more dense manner uh, and design to be able to deliver SSD in uh, an all new non-disc based form factor. And what you have there is the result of many hours of engineering and some incredibly bright and talented people taking the same core components, same controller, same uh, die, same uh, PLI, um, uh, power loss uh, imminent uh, technology from our data center two and a half inch form factor and making it in a, in a much easier, more consumable for rack scale design form factor. Um, this will fit into, is designed to fit into a 1U server and putting 32 of these into a 1U server and at a density of 32 terabytes could uh, give us almost a petabyte of storage in a single rack unit. So this represents uh, the cloud scale uh, consumption model for SSD. And one thing that you also notice is that the aluminum uh, uh, housing um, is cool to the touch. Um, so it's a conductive surface to remove heat. Um, in a 1U server, there would be two millimeters of clearance between the rulers, and that would allow for uh, uh, enough airflow to cool the SSD and still allow plenty of uh, airflow to the back to, uh, to, to your CPU complex. Uh, thank you for confirming a couple things. Aaron Buley and I recorded a very quick video um, on Twitter yesterday. I was holding the ruler, and uh, right before we recorded that, someone had asked about the space in between them, so you just told me about that. Um, the other thing is you confirmed petabyte, right? Tried, that's the goal, to get to that kind of capacity yeah. in one U, and that shocked some people when I mentioned that. And it's a pretty bold number. Um, and then finally, FLIR thermal camera. So on my website, I've actually aimed them at a device uh, like this. I plan to do it, um, I've done it on many different devices, with the lid off the server, not ideal. You have no airflow across it, not ideal, right? It's got channels of aluminum, you're trying to push air from front to back. Still, so it's a bit of an abuse test, but when you name a FLIR thermal camera, it can be fun to see how aluminum spreads out the heat. And what's cool about your publications, you actually show a picture of a thermal image of the whole ruler trying to spread out that thermal right. load. Um, I found that interesting, because uh, M.2 form factor, the gum stick, or there's, um, tends to have a very focused tiny area where it gets quite toasty. And that could be where your thermal throttling comes in, where it'll dip by like 30%. So it's great that you're obviously thinking about that in the whole form factor. It'll be interesting to see what happens in the years to come. As I walk around the trade floor, there's lots of form factors right now. Um, but in general, if you could just, uh, we'll just wrap this up with the number of lanes, right? So what I'm holding here, generally if you have a PCI slot this long, you got 16 lanes. That means you could put four M.2 gum sticks and get them at full speed, four lanes each. What are we looking at here with the ruler? And then we'll head on over and take a look at U.2 and the newest P4800X. So this is a by four PCIe interface. Um, there is a working group called the EDSFF working group that's working to make this a standard PCI Gen uh, 4 and 5 future compatible by 8 uh, connector uh, that could be adopted for other use cases for uh, uh, FPGAs or GPUs, for example, any PCIe device. So today this is uh, electrically by, by 4 PCIe, but um, we're working with the group to make a, a standard uh, uh, con connector that's adopted across a wide uh, family of PCIe technologies and would be future-proofed for uh, two generations to come and offer more lanes of, of PCIe and dual port.
All right, great. Thank you, Juan. This is a little like a uh, karaoke hand the microphone back. <laughs> so let, let's head over out to the showroom floor at VMworld 2017. Juan, I thought we'd also show you some other form factors. So let's start with the PCIe device in your hand, Juan. So this is the Optane uh, data center drive. Uh, it's an add-in card form factor. Uh, these cards are generally available in 375 gig capacities. And these, um, this is the media that we were discussing earlier that provides very, very low latency and high quality of service. Uh, average latency of under 10 microseconds. Okay, so one, um, if you could tease a little bit what else might be coming as far as what you're holding. Uh, this is a enterprise product, right? Is the focus on this? Right, yep. So this has all the high availability data, data center uh, features, uh, PLI technology, um, and the same. Let, let, me just interject. let me just interject, PLI. So power loss protection is another acronym that I hear, power loss protection being super capacitor. So there's different acronyms for that. But. Right, exactly. Uh, power loss imminent um, is uh, our terminology to uh, in, ensure that the data that's in the SRAM of the device gets written down onto the media itself. Okay, great. And yeah, I interrupt you, you pulled something out there. Let's take a look at the interface there. So uh, this particular interface is, is U.2 and all of the same components and everything that you see on the exterior of the add-in card form factor are enclosed in a standard two and a half inch form factor in the U.2 electrical interface. So these drives are the same with one very important difference and that is the, the hot plug ability. So if you might imagine a, a vSAN cluster, um, you could add additional caching devices in this form factor um, to increase your capacity on the fly. Uh, you could show me the front a little bit too, let me just get the label in there. Yep. And okay, so there's the carrier, and, and just hold still. I'm going to come around this. Okay, there we go. So yeah, U.2. So really, we're talking about NVMe, and how about lanes? Uh, this is four. Okay, so that's four lanes currently. And one thing I might also mention is that these are all data center class drives. We're obviously at VMworld, and we're showing uh, vSAN and. Um, this is all the latest generation platform and uh, CPU technology, but Optane will be available for gaming and enthusiast use cases as well. So you can have a very, very fast system at home that takes advantage of uh, 3D crosspoint media. All right, thank you so much for your time today, Juan. I really appreciate the overview of all the form factors coming from Tel.